A heavy police presence in Brussels this afternoon. I'm Kenneth Craig with the latest on the investigation into the suspects coming up. The Lexington Mayor's Office just learned a local company will be cutting more than 100 employees. A line of strong to severe thunderstorms will roll through tomorrow. We're going to go over timing and how severe are we looking at with this system. I'll have that coming up in just a few minutes. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. The terrorist attacks in Belgium are hitting one Kentucky family especially hard. A Lexington native and her husband are still unaccounted for after yesterday's explosions. A lot of emotional hours are ticking by. Justin and Stephanie Schultz were in the Brussels airport when two blasts went off, killing dozens of people. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk now with some reaction from family members. That is our top story at noon. Mark. Good afternoon, Bill. The couple's family says yesterday was the longest day of their lives. They tell me it is just maddening that they still have not heard anything about the couple these past 30 hours. They are frantically searching for information, anxiously waiting for something, anything, that will bring them word that they're okay. The family started calling hospitals in Brussels after the State Department told them that Stephanie and Justin Schultz are not on their list of casualties. The hospitals are not releasing any information over the phone, though, so Stephanie's coworkers are now looking for the couple. Several of her colleagues are going from hospital to hospital in the city, searching for their friend and her husband. They have not been seen since terrorists set off two bombs in the airport yesterday morning. They were waiting for Stephanie's mother to check in for her flight when the explosions ripped through that part of the airport. At least 34 people were killed in a series of blasts at the airport and the subway. While the couple is still missing, their family is holding on to hope, praying that the next phone call that comes in could be the one to say that they're okay. The not knowing is, is the worst, you know, and now it's been over 30 hours since anyone's had any kind of contact with them. So, you know, that's obviously frightening, but you just got to just try to stay positive. silence. Stephanie graduated from Bryan Station High and Transylvania University. After she met her husband in Nashville, they moved over to Brussels to work as accountants. Their family just hopes they'll be home safe soon. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Well, obviously, as do so many, thank you very much, Mark. And Mayor Jim Gray has posted his support for the couple on Facebook and Twitter today, saying that he is praying that they are found safe. Now, meanwhile, investigators say several suspects connected to the Brussels terror attacks are still on the loose. At least 31 people died, and more than 250 were injured when the bombs went off yesterday at the airport and busy train station during rush hour. Kenneth Craig is in Brussels to continue our top story team coverage at noon. Authorities released new information about the suspects in the deadly attacks at the airport and a train station in Brussels. They say the man in the middle of this surveillance photo is Ibrahim El Bukrawi, and that he detonated a bomb inside the airport terminal, killing himself and many others. His brother, Khaled El Bukrawi, is accused of detonating a suicide bomb in the subway. The other two people in the airport photo have not been identified. The man on the left is believed to have killed himself at the airport. The man in the hat slipped away, and investigators are searching for him. A raid in a Brussels suburb this morning turned up empty. Security experts say the Belgian police need to do a better job of community policing. They don't know the community right well, and, and they don't get the intelligence they need. In central Brussels, people of all faiths are gathering to pay tribute to the victims. Children are writing messages in chalk, while others are pausing to say prayers. There is a heavy police presence at this memorial and across the city. Many of the subways are back up and running this afternoon as people try to get back to their daily lives. Here in Brussels, we are safe, and I think we, are, we will always live in safe Place like this. This morning, people in Belgium and in cities across Europe pause for a moment of silence to remember the victims killed in the deadly attacks. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Brussels, Belgium. Now, the attacks came just a few days after police in Brussels arrested Salih Abdelassam, the prime suspect of November's 
Paris terror attacks. Authorities are still also looking for a suspected accomplice of his. Keep checking with WKYT.com for updates on the Belgium terror attacks. You'll also find the latest information on the WKYT news app. Turning to other news at noon, last month, printing and software company Lexmark announced it was planning to cut 550 jobs over the next year. We now have learned how many of those positions will be at its Lexington headquarters. Mayor Jim Gray's office says they have been told that the layoffs involve at least 143 workers here locally. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner now has reaction. Caitlin? Of the hundreds of jobs Lexmark said it would cut worldwide, some of those will impact employees right here in Lexington, according to the mayor's office. Those layoffs will happen during a 14-day period starting at the end of May, and we're told it could impact close to 140 employees. The cuts are part of a restructuring plan announced in February. It's expected to save the company about $67 million this year and $100 million the following. 550 positions are expected to be eliminated worldwide over a 12-month span, with some of those jobs being shifted to what Lexmark calls low-cost countries. Lexmark had said in a statement they were very pleased with the progress being made. So far, the company hasn't revealed what other locations will be impacted by those cuts. You know, Lexmark's a longtime member of this community, one that we work with uh, across many organizations in the community, their, their reach is, is long. So uh, the news is, is disappointing. Uh, our attention now turns to working with those who are affected by the layoffs. We reached out to the company today asking they confirm how many employees will be cut here in Lexington, and they said they won't be discussing HR matters publicly. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. The city says it will be focusing on how to help those people who have been laid off. Well, it's another really nice day in the bluegrass with sunny skies and temperatures back up close to 70 degrees. But a front is moving our way, bringing showers and storms back into the forecast for tomorrow. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now with a look ahead. Micah. Yeah, yeah what we're going to see the next 12, 24 hours, well, we're going to see the clouds on the increase. We're going to see those temperatures to continue to climb. And then the rain shows up tomorrow, not so much for today. The rest of the afternoon, we're there in the mid to upper 50s right now, but we'll actually finish off in the mid to upper 60s later on this afternoon with those gusty winds. Now, I'm going to talk about these storms for tomorrow. It's what everybody's focused in on. And I'll go over the timing coming up. Well, a man charged in connection with a Central Kentucky murder case is now admitting guilt. Daniel Keene pleaded guilty to kidnapping and murdering Charles Walker and Sansare Warford in Richmond five years ago. WKYT's Sean Moody is at the Madison County Courthouse to tell us what happens next in the case. Hey there, Barb. Daniel Keene was scheduled to go to trial next month, but four years almost to the day after investigators found the remains of Charles Walker and Sansare Warford, Keene pleaded guilty. Investigators said Walker and Warford were killed back in 2010. Keene's co defendant, Matthew Denholm, pleaded guilty back in 2014. Keene pleaded guilty to charges of murder, kidnapping, burglary, tampering with physical evidence, and abuse of a corpse. The recommended sentence is 40 years. The Commonwealth's attorney said Keene would be eligible for parole after 20 years. Formal sentencing is still to come. Warford and Walker's families were in the courtroom today, and they said they had hoped Keene would spend more time in prison. Well, of course, it wasn't enough, but at the time, we just we just thankful that we was able to we're able to get to where we are right now with the situation, considering everything that's went on, and we just we just thankful and uh, we know in time in God's time that they will get what needs to be done to them. Now, at least he's got life, you know, in jail. You know, if you're gonna kill somebody, know you did wrong, give them more time than 40 years. Daniel Keene's formal sentencing is scheduled for May 3rd. Live in Richmond, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. And LaBruce Ellington, another person charged in the case, is still awaiting trial. The Kentucky House has approved a two year, four and a half billion dollar spending plan for roads and bridges. That proposal includes more than 1,200 projects, although not all of them will be built. State funded projects are expected to cost about a billion dollars. There's only around 500 million dollars in state tax dollars available to spend. 
Well, five cheetahs, little cubs, are getting a helping hand from a nursery dog right now after being born via C-section. It's just to our north up in Cincinnati. Now, the zoo says the cubs are doing much better after receiving critical care at the nursery. And now an Australian shepherd dog is there to give the animals a companion to snuggle and provide some warmth for them. With the dog nearby, zoo officials say it helps the cubs develop by giving them a body to climb. The three male cubs and two female cubs were born at the zoo's regional cheetah breeding facility earlier this month. And oh, they are cute. <laughs> they sure are. A dog and cats living together. Well, an urgent warning from the World Health Organization today about the spread of the Zika virus. Find out what officials are saying about the outbreak coming up on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, comedian Amy Schumer must have really enjoyed the service she received while checking out the Broadway blockbuster hit Hamilton. Find out how much she left for the bartender next on WKYT. You know, Kentucky weather is what it is. For those of us who've lived here our entire lives, we've just accepted the fact that we're never going to be able to control it. I remember growing up in Sayersville and wondering, what is it about Kentucky that makes our weather so ridiculous? And that passion to understand it has led me to where I am today. While I still can't control it, I sure as heck really understand it. I'm WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, and I stand for Kentucky. When someone is injured on the job, that injury can devastate a family. Most people live paycheck to paycheck, and any loss of income can be a significant hardship. I'm Matt Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. There are questions you may have. When must I report my injury? What benefits am I entitled to? Where do I receive medical care? You can find answers at ForThePeople.com. Don't wait. Your future is in your hands. Morgan & Morgan. For the people. Everyone wants to be energy smart, but sometimes we need a little reminder. With Simple Saver, you save energy and the environment, and you earn energy bill credits. So take the hint. Just call or sign up online, and we'll do all the work. Simple Saver, because being energy smart pays. A message from Kentucky's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Think for a moment. You don't think twice about having your eyes tested, but what about your hearing? Hi, I'm Marcia Mattingly. At Belltone, we've helped thousands of people lead richer, fuller lives by showing them that they can hear the way they should. At Belltone, a free hearing test can determine if you need hearing help. Call now. You have everything to gain. 50 years and three generations serve in the tri-state with the most trusted name in hearing aids, Belltone. We've got an online auto approval horn swoggle. Oh, I hate the swogglers. They said I was approved online. Uh oh, I smell a butt coming. Yeah, a big butt. But I wasn't really approved. Onlydrivetime.com gives you a real online approval in two minutes. No butts. Because butts stink. Butts do stink. Um, kind of a double meaning. <laughs> what do you mean, huh? Save yourself. Get a real online approval first. Go to drivetime.com. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. Presidential frontrunners Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton continue to pad their delegate leads with big wins in the winner-take-all Arizona primary, but the other candidates didn't walk away empty-handed. It was an important day in the race. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders won the Democratic presidential caucuses in Idaho and Utah. He says tremendous voter turnouts helped his campaign claim those two victories. Texas Senator Ted Cruz won Utah's GOP caucus. Ohio Governor John Kasich was Second, and Jeb Bush has just endorsed Cruz today, by the way. The World Health Organization has issued a warning that if the Zika virus spreads beyond Latin America and the Caribbean, the world will face a severe public health crisis. Zika is currently linked to a spike in babies born with the birth defect, which causes abnormally small heads. And now there is also scientific consensus connecting the virus to a rise in a rare neurological syndrome that can also cause paralysis and death. The WHO estimates there could be up to 4 million cases of Zika in the Americas in the next year. 
Well, the London premiere of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, took place just as scheduled in the wake of the terrorist attacks in Brussels, Belgium. And there was heightened security at the event. And Warner Brothers did cancel the red carpet interviews with the stars of the film. The studio says it decided to screen the movie, quote, rather than yield to terror. Meanwhile, Variety reports that the movie is on track for a strong debut. Industry analysts predict the movie could bring in $150 million domestically and $300 million worldwide over its opening weekend. Comedian Amy Schumer showed some major generosity to a bartender on Broadway. The funny lady shared these pictures on Instagram of her taking in the Broadway hit Hamilton. At intermission, Schumer and her friends ordered a round of drinks at the concession stand. And that's when the bartender got quite a surprise. Schumer left a $1,000 tip on her $77 tab. Six other bartenders were working that night, so they split it seven ways, each collecting about $160. All right, a nice gesture for sure, that's right? Some gratitude for you. I'm glad you're with us on WKYT later. A man who lived in a Winchester complex that was destroyed by fire earlier in the month is suing the owners and the person suspected of starting it. We'll have the latest on the lawsuit coming up on WKYT News at 1230. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. Like WKYT on Facebook. Listen, guys, if you go to Hellsburg and spend the same amount of money, your girl will be wearing much smaller diamonds. Hellsburg's third carat bridal sets are $8.99. The Castle's half carat bridal sets are the same price. Nobody makes I do as big and affordable as we do. Seems like every morning is the same work. Get the kids out the door with their sets so that they can get to school and I can get to work. Just sitting at a red light, I get hit from behind. I'm attorney Dear Wisex, the hammer. Serious accidents happen every day. It's what happens next that's really important. I'm busy every day. I didn't want to waste my time with the insurance company. I called in Daryl Isaacs, the hammer, and they handled it for me faster than I ever imagined. Getting Kentuckians what they deserve has been my job for over 23 years. Car wreck, get the hammer. I love grocery shopping at Kroger, but sometimes life gets busy. So I use Clickless. It's easy. I just order online. And with thousands of great items and fresh food to choose from, I can get what I want the way I want it. Then pick up my order at the store without ever leaving my car. And for me, that's a game changer. Order online, pick up curbside at store. We think you're gonna love ClickList. Try it now at Kroger.com slash ClickList. There are a lot of banks to choose from. Some are big, some are really big, and some are very small. At Fork Bank, we're just right. Big enough to serve all your financial needs and small enough to give you great customer service. And if you're too busy to visit the bank, our virtual banking center at ForkBank.com lets you open a new account, apply for a loan, and manage your accounts. We invite you to bank with us. Our mission is to exceed your expectations every day. Our city is like one big machine with thousands of moving parts. LexTrend keeps more of those parts moving than most of us realize. Moving thousands of people a day to and from places of education or employment or enjoyment. Days and nights, rain or shine, weekdays and weekends, Sundays and holidays. So whether you ride the bus or not, you can count on the fact that many of the people you count on count on Lextran. The castle, twice the jewelry, half the price. Jared's half carat best friend true love rings are $9.99. At the castle, get the same quality, same carat weight rings for only $5.95. Shop 10 castle locations or thecastlejewelry.com. Get WKYT news and weather updates on 100.1 WKQQ. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, it all depends on where you are is the way it feels outside. There are some locations with the cloudy skies. You're getting the breezy conditions, so it doesn't feel great, but it doesn't feel bad. We're there in the 50s in Lexington, 58 degrees. But then go over to Jackson, Breathitt County. Work your way into Laurel County, Whitley County, that area. You're talking about Corbin. 
London area, we're talking about temperatures in the mid 60s. So it all depends on where you are. Rest of the afternoon feels great, mid 60s expected. Let's talk about tomorrow. That's what we really want to focus in on. We're talking about the severe timing. Remember, this is a low end severe weather threat. No widespread severe weather expected. An isolated cell here or there could be possible as this line moves on through. But around I-75, I've updated these these time frames, and you know what? They might be updated overnight and into tomorrow morning uh, when you wake up tomorrow and see these. Uh, but they won't be far off. Okay, so noon to 2 p.m. It's an afternoon evening type of setup. It's going to be across 65 and back toward our far western areas. Then you get into Lexington. You go down uh, 64 either way. Go into the northern zone, 75, 27, 127. That's 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. And then you work your way over toward the east and southeast. You're talking 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. So for the most part, it's going to be afternoon and evening is when you start to see the severe threat. Not just showers or thunderstorms, not just the rain chance. But the severe threat is during that time. Then we head off toward Friday, much cooler conditions at 50 degrees. Let's talk about your Saturday and Sunday heading off into Easter weekend. I still don't see the rain moving in during the daylight hours for most. Much of that's going to be during the evening and nighttime hours, especially the farther north you are. The farther north you are, the better likelihood of actually staying dry during the daylight. Uh, but still, there is that chance of rain on Sunday off into Monday. But all eyes obviously focused on tomorrow with that uh, small risk of severe weather. So not an outbreak yeah. type of situation, but still an isolated cell rolling over your house will be an outbreak for you. There's no doubt mm. about that. So just keep yeah, it in mind. Not a good thing. I'm glad the forecast is pretty good because uh, the shark has arrived. He's watching so, us, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he has his eye eyes on us. Big eye. Or meet meet the shark next hour. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. Next half hour. All right, thank you, Mike. We'll be back in a moment on WKYT. The softball women are rolling early in the season. And the Georgetown Tigers play for a national championship. Dave Baker has an ending you won't want to miss. Next in sports. And with all that's happening in the world, let's check stocks at midday. The major market indicators are down some. Survivor tonight. As far as alliances go, everything's up in the air. New tribes. We have to trust somebody. It's nerve wracking. I've got to make an alliance. New tensions. Are you going to take me out? Tell me the truth, people. I know what you're talking about. Don't lie. New temptations. Nick looks like a Greek god. The angular features of his face make for great photography. I know that because I've modeled off and on for years and years. New Survivor, CBS Tonight, or stream it live or on demand. How do we put our buying power to work for you? With Power Buy, Power Financing, Power Upgrade, Power Coupon, Free TVs, and more. Hurry, because our Power Sellathon ends Tuesday. Nobody beats the rats. Honey, you gotta see this. Time Warner Cable now makes your internet do more. Honey! Honey! Our ultra fast internet with home Wi Fi keeps your devices connected. <laughs> Anywhere in your home. Have you seen this video? <laughs> Discover how much more is included. Internet plans start as low as $14.99 per month. Call 1 855 1TWC. Time Warner Cable. And hopefully, this check will make things a lot easier. It'll cover your medical bills, and we've even given you an allowance to help cover your expenses while your car's getting worked. All you need to do is sign right here, and we'll take care of everything else. Thank you so much. What's a smiling cheater? Jay Marshall, a smiling cheater is still a cheater. If you want to make sure you get all your money, you better call Hughes and Coleman. Call 800-800-4600. That time of year for Buick March Madness at Adams Buick GMC Truck in Richmond, and we're slamming the competition. Now choose from over 25 new Buick Encores starting at $21,995. Lease a new Buick Regal $299 a month. Save over $6,500 on a new Buick LaCrosse. Now $3,720. Or get a new Buick Enclave for $33,900. Plus, get the Adams Advantage, a limited lifetime powertrain warranty. Buick March Madness is on at Adams Buick GMC Truck in Richmond, where Sid says sell them. At Window World, you get the best price right up front. Not just any price. Our lowest price. Guaranteed. Our windows feature the good housekeeping seal. And come with a lifetime limited warranty. Act now and get a house full of windows for as low as $79 a month installed. And save hundreds on siding, doors, shutters, and more. Best products, best service. Best people. Not only do we stand behind our windows, we stand on it. Window World. Preferred window installer of the Big Blue Nation. 
How do we put our buying power to work for you? Get a free lifestyle power base upgrade when you buy any premium mattress at $14.99 or more. Certain Perfect Sleeper with gel memory foam. King for a queen price, $9.99. Nobody beats he rats. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Mix 94.5. Everybody that's ever played sports dreams of finishing the season with a script that comes right out of Hollywood. But in real life, we know that many of those scripts are rejected. And for the Tigers of Georgetown, this is one show they'd just as soon forget. Last night, taking on Mid-America Christian for the NAI National Championship. Georgetown, the number one overall seed in Kansas City. And the Tigers come out hot from outside. Five threes to start the game. Tony Kimbrough had two of them. 15-7 Georgetown. Late in the half, Jordan Green. How about the alley-oop to DeAndre McWhorter? Georgetown up 50 39 at the half. Mid America pulls within three to start the second half. Noah Cottrell in the corner delivers the big three while falling to the ground. This game would go to overtime. 10 seconds left. Georgetown trailing 98 96. Cottrell gets it to Trent Gilbert in the corner. The three. Got it. Gives Georgetown the one point lead. Four seconds to play. Gilbert's only three points of the game. How about one more chance for Mid America? Malcolm Mann dribbles the length of the floor, gets the shot off from his hip just before the buzzer. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Mid America upsets Georgetown on a game winning shot in overtime, 100 to 99 the final. Still a great season for the Tigers. Boarhead State still trying to win a championship of their own there in the semifinals of the College Basketball Invitational tonight. They'll take on Ohio. Up in Athens at 7 tonight. Uh, there is a link on the Ohio Athletics website where you can watch that video live. If they make it to the championship, the best of three championship in the CBI is on ESPNU. How about 12th ranked Kentucky softball off to its best start in program history? Hosting Northern Kentucky yesterday, Katie Reed back up the middle. This one gets past the center field, rolls all the way to the wall. Two run score, it gives Kentucky a 3 0 lead. Now it's 5 0 in the fifth. How about Abby Cheek? That is warning track power. One hop off the wall. Silver Samuel scores. Wildcats cruising. And still in that fifth, Brianne Ray puts the cap on it. First swing is a pinch hitter. Two run shot extends the Kentucky lead to nine zip. And that is a run rule win. That's how it would end. Lefty Megan Prince for Kentucky throws a no hitter in the process. Wildcats improved to 26 and four on the year. They host Murray State this afternoon. At five tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, former Wildcat Cameron Mills, and UK Radio Network analyst Mike Pratt wrap up the season and talk about the state champion Dunbar Bulldogs. That's at six on 6:30 WLAP. I'll see Mr. Mills as the Bulldogs celebrate that championship a little bit later this afternoon. We'll bring that celebration to you coming up beginning at four, guys. But for now, that's a look at sports on this Wednesday. All right, and that was very uh, special for you, Buzz. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And there's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. An arrest has been made in the case of human remains found in eastern Kentucky. Authorities say several people possibly linked to deadly terror attacks in Belgium are still on the loose. We'll hear from a college student from Lexington studying abroad in Brussels. Coming up on WKYT News at 1230. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $90 million, and Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $35 million.